hard tonight and next week. Um, why go to church? You know, as Christians, we put a lot of stock into it. We, we tell people to go to church. We go to church. Why? I mean, what's the purpose behind it? And, and we're going to look at two major, major reasons um, why to get connected in a church. Um, you know, growing up, I grew up uh, in a very, in a church with no laws and plenty of rules. I think that that sums it up. And uh, so you had to go to church because you were a bad Christian if you didn't. And if you weren't there for the morning and the evening, God hated you. And uh, if you didn't do all the things right, God hated you. And, you know, it was, I mean, it's thing after thing after thing. Well, now that I'm an adult and I actually read the Bible for myself, there are, the, the church, we go to church for our own benefit. And, uh, you know, I... I I feel bad for people who aren't connected to a church because, you know, we live in a very hopeless society. You know, it, it, everybody's just starving for a little bit of hope and everybody feels so disconnected and they don't have anywhere that they belong. Well, that's the church. The church is supposed to be somewhere that we belong. And I think that's something that makes it so great because you got a bunch of people who normally wouldn't connect that do connect because we all have a common life purpose. We all have a common life goal. Or at least we, we should connect with people who aren't like us. Um, I'm always a little bit bothered when, you know, you go to certain places and they say, oh, we're a white church. And it's like, well, um, I mean, I guess that's okay if there are literally nobody else in the, com in the community, but a church should mirror what's in the community. Yes. See what I mean? And, uh, yeah, anyways, at that, at that church that I went to, that I kind of grew up in, there was a lot of backbiting, a lot of gossip, a lot of rumors, a lot of anger. There was no unity. Um, it was almost like, a, like you know, if you've ever watched commentaries, or, or not commentaries, uh, uh, documentaries on places like um, Joan, Jonestown, you know, how they had to um, intimidate people into doing what they wanted them to do. You know, it was kind of like that. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't mean to say it that bad. I mean, you, nobody was asking us to drink orange juice or anything. Or, I mean, uh, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. But, uh, but there was kind of that idea that, you know, someone's always watching you. And so you have to... You have to make sure to so you don't see no people rat on you. you know? um, anyways, but another thing that I kind of helped me to get over that is realizing a very simple truth that everyone will fail you. And actually, Chuck talked about this a couple Sundays ago, a couple Sunday nights ago, that everyone will fail you. And even if they never fail you, they will one day die and leave you without them. No matter how you look at it, nobody that you have in your life will always be there. And so you, you, you see a lot, of, a lot of people, especially if you, see, if you spend any time on social media, they, they do these rants about, everyone's betrayed me, you know, nobody's there for me. And, you know, to a certain point, that is, that is true. I mean, you can't really have hope in people, you know what I mean? Because you, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Um, but here's the flip side to that. You, too, will fail everyone. You will never be able to completely satisfy everyone. There's two sides of that. That's just the way it works. Now, you don't have to like that, but that's the way it is because we're people. We have limitations. Other people have limitations. Right. But, uh, but beyond all of that, the church is a dream. The church is a dream of a family that lives past death. It's a family that we never have to say goodbye to. It's a family that only grows bigger and bigger and never gets any smaller. That's a good thing. It, it, it's a dream of, of a place where everyone's always there for each other. It's a dream of what we could be with God. See, if you, if you look back, you know, in, in the Bible, you know, people got d divided by different things and whatnot. But in the church, there's a chance of unity and there's a chance of hope for tomorrow. And there's a chance of somewhere where you always belong. And I think that that is something beautiful in and of itself. Because if we're honest, a lot of us would be willing to join cults if only to find somewhere that we belong. If only to find somewhere that we had a little bit of hope. But in the church, you don't have to join a cult. <laughs> I mean, well, that's the idea behind it anyways. Um, it is a place you belong even though you're different. And no matter where you don't belong, you do here. That's the idea of the church. And if you look through the whole, whole uh, New Testament, it's there everywhere. We're going to look at just a few things. First off is 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. 
And I started looking in the Bible about what the church is referred to. Now, obviously, the church is you and me. It's, it's people who are, who are saved, people who have accepted Jesus Christ as the way to salvation. Okay, That is the church. But if you look at what the New Testament calls us, you'd be surprised at some of the things. Obviously, the most popular metaphor is that we are the bride of Christ. It talks of singular, bride of Christ. So that, that kind of talks about unity. But here we're going to look at a few other things. 1 Timothy chapter 5, um, verses 1 through 2 says this. Do not sharply rebuke an older man, but rather appeal to him as a father. To the younger man as brothers. The older woman as mothers, and the younger woman as sisters. In all purity. So here we see the first thing that we are likened to. A family. A family. And see, that, that was extremely important, especially in the ancient world. Because they had this idea of honor and shame. And if your father switched religions, you had to switch religions with him because you had to do what he said. But in Christianity, Jesus said this, it will be like a sword set against each other. That if you don't hate your father on account of me. What was he talking about? You had to be willing to give up your family's honor for the sake of following Christ. Now that, that was hard because let me tell you, in Roman culture, you had to worship the Roman gods. That was a part of being Roman. Romans saw themselves as elite. You know, kind of like uh, white power. It's kind of like that, except it was like Roman power. You know, we are, we are the, the height of, of civilization. Everyone else is beneath us. So in order to be called a Christian, a follower of Christ, you had to be willing to abandon that. And that was a big deal back then, because if you didn't have your family's honor, you had nothing. You had nothing. If your father was to, was to say, I, I, I reject you, you are no longer part of my family, you literally would lose your place in life. You would lose your purpose, you would, you would lose your, your, your hope for tomorrow, you would, you would lose your inheritance, everything. Your entire life depended on your, 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 your belonging to your family. So here we see something that is even better than that. A place where we belong regardless. No matter what family you have reject you, in Christ, we are one family. So then the next thing that we see here is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 12, it says, For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. And if you hop down to verse uh, 14, it says this, For the body is not one member, but many. So here we have two very important ideas of what is the church. The church is a family, and the church is a body. We are created for each other. For unity, for our for our sake. Don't don't go to church because you know somebody will judge you if you don't go to church. Go to church so that you have somewhere that, that you you have people who care about you. So I mean, where you don't have to wonder, gee, if anything happened to me, would there be anybody there? Hopefully, you know, get connected with people who who, who love God. Absolutely. So, um, in Saint Corinthians chapter one, verse. Uh, Three through four, it says this. And I have never felt more uncomfortable on the stage, guys. I am wearing these sandals, and I, I hate wearing sandals on the stage. Let me tell you a funny story. I was working outside, okay, and I got you know those little those little weeds that they stick to everything and you, you pick at your pants for a thousand years and they're still there, I don't know how. Those things. Got them all over my shoes. So I, I switch them out and I'm like, I'll clean them up later. I go down my boots, and my dog smells terrible. So I go to give her a bath and everything. I, I change everything, except I leave my boots on. So then I step inside, and they're soaked. And I'm like, well, I can't go smelling like a dog. So this was my last option, guys. I literally have three pairs of shoes. Unless you wanted me to ha wear house shoes, which I, I feel like that would be a little bit too far. <laughs> so anyways, St. Crimson chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Okay, we know all that. But then verse 4. Who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Think of it, and I've given this, I, I've taught on that before, and when I did before, I mentioned it. It's like, it's like tele, uh, uh, or electric poles. We all work together and we carry the current to each other. Yeah. So we carry the current to each other. That's what we were made for. 
and uh, for our own for our own well-being. You know, a, a couple of weeks ago or last week or whatever, a trucker came down and uh, knocked that power pole off, and you know the rest of the line was messed up because that one was messed up. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot like the church. Um, okay. So here we see we see a model of helping each other. We see we see a model of having a support system. Mm -hmm. It is my hope that one day no Christian will ever have to feel like they have to work through a battle of suicide by themselves. We should never have to do that. We should always be available for one another to where you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what darkness you're going through, buddy, I'm there with you. You know what I mean? That's, that's the idea of the church. Um, we see the idea of helping one another, of comforting one another, of encouraging, of loving without reservation. And uh, now, obviously, we, have, we aren't there yet. None of us are there yet. But that's what we're working for. It's a dream of what could be. A dream of what could be if we only submit to God. That's what he can do in us. Also, we go to church because God told us to. <laughs> we go to church because it was his idea. He said, boy, you know, this, this guy here, he kind of looks lonely. Let's give him a woman. <coughs> so here we have Adam and Eve. And it was the same idea with the church. You know, I, we got these people here. Let, let's, bring, let's bring them together. Let, let's bring them together. I think, I think their life would be better together. And uh, obviously, you know, God's really looking out for our best interest. Um, and that brings us to a whole level, a whole other level that I really don't feel like we need to touch on. So I'll just very briefly mention it. Obviously, if you love God, you will be the church. You will forgive others and you will love others. Even that one. You know the one I'm talking about. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 talks about that if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. That's the idea of the church is that we forgive one another. Yeah, we mess up. Yeah, we stab each other in the back. Yeah, we mess up. Yeah, we're a bunch of hypocrites. But we forgive each other. Have you guys ever seen Shrek? You forgive each other. That's what friends do. You know Donkey the Loudmouth one? You know him. Just watch the movie. Uh, and then uh, and then 1 John 2, 9 talks about that if, if you say that you love God but you don't love your brother, you're a liar. Oof. That's painful. Um, so that takes us to just a few more quick things. Don't give up on one another. You know, a lot of pastors will talk about how you shouldn't, how you shouldn't get divorced and stuff. Which, you know, okay, I get that. But I want to talk, to, let's talk about something a little, something more important. Don't divorce one another. See what I mean? Where you say, I don't want you in my life anymore. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. I'm talking about obviously in the in the body, not in the idea of marriage. I'm not really commenting on marriage right now. Um, so share we're meant to share life with one another. You know, in some churches, it's this idea that pastors should be doing all the house, all the hospital visits, all the house visits. No, we should be doing the hospital visits. And we should be helping one another. We should be there for each other. The idea that the pastor is the entertainer and he's the one who does all the work while I sit on my butt. That's just completely not what the Bible says at all. We're supposed to be there for each other. And uh, so every church, they, they did a poll, and, and almost every single church said that they thought they were friendly. But here's the thing. They didn't really ask what other people thought. Do you think that church is, is friendly? Which brings to, to a very important point. Don't, don't act friendly. Be a friend. Friendly says they walk in the door and you say, hey, hey, neighbor, and then you go on your merry way. Being a friend means you, you, you try and see, this is very hard for me because I hate talking to people. I'd rather that they just do all the work and I just kind of go along with it. Um, in fact, in all the leadership books, they say when someone new comes, you know, don't, don't embarrass them. You know, uh, don't, don't have them answer a bunch of questions. So I made, sure to, I made sure to ignore that little pointer. Isaiah came to Yams the other night, and I had, I had him, I had, I, I, we all grilled him, you know. What do you think of Project 86? Okay. And what's your favorite band? What, Red? Who's, who is that? No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, 
in Philippians 2, 3 through 4, which I think is a great way to just summarize all of that. It says this, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Whoa. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Boy, I tell you what, if that doesn't grind your gears, you weren't paying attention. I read that and I was like, well, thanks, God. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> so that takes us to the idea of, okay, you, be friendly. How do we be friendly? There's a few different ways. Sit with new guests. And I, that, walk up to them and ask them, may I sit next to you? Never ask them to sit next to you, though. Because then you're telling them you have to get up and come sit by me. I mean, that's just, that's terribly awkward. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation. When you're that person in church, you're like, um, no, I'm good here. I, I'm good here. I, I snaked in without anybody else, like, calling me out and embarrassing me. So far, the pastor hasn't addressed me from stage. But so far, I, I've made it through this all right. Just let me sit here and be okay. So ask to sit by them. Are you, are you keeping your eyes out for when new people come in? And when they are, do you, do you go and sit by them? See what I mean? Um, another thing, um, and uh, invite people. Invite your friends to come join us. Do you ever get encouraged when you come to church? Do you ever get encouraged here? Do you just like like singing the songs and then and like listening and, and, and the prayer and everything? Is there something you like there that, that encourages you? So invite other people so they can encounter encourage that too. Encounter that too. Um, and invite them to things like we've got um, we've got the Easter egg hunt coming up in a couple weeks on Easter Sunday on in the afternoon at two thirty at the park. Invite them to that. I mean, it's, it's not it's not we're not going to be you know yelling at them about Jesus or anything. We're we're just going to be loving on them. You know, it, it's it's going to be real real easy, real straightforward. It's no conviction, no judgment. Just hey, bring your kids on down. They'll have a heck of a good time. You know what I mean? So uh, another way. Um, Get to know people outside of your group. Now, this is hard because we get our, our little niche, you know, that we get our little group that we're, we're good at. And, uh, but, you know, you never, you never know what somebody else needs, and you never know what you might be missing in your own life. Sometimes people say, well, all my friends, you know, they're, they're the, I don't know, I just, what? so make more friends. <laughs> I mean... And then here's, here's, a, here's the real question that you, that you can judge yourself by all these things. Do you care if they're there? Do you care if someone's here or not? Do you care if they're getting encouraged or not? Do you care if, if that person you know that's depressed is, is, has been locked up in their room for the past two weeks? Do you care? When somebody doesn't come and join us in worship on Sunday, do you care? Are, are your eyes open and waiting for them to come? I mean, is it something that... Not, not so that you can convict them of not being here, but so that you can make sure they're okay. Check up on people, you know, do I, do I care if they're there? Um, it, if, you, if you invite somebody and they don't come, don't make them feel like they're dumb or judged or something like that. Just let it go. You invite them, they didn't come, that's fine. Don't pretend like there's a, there's a wall between you, because there's not. So they didn't want to come. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, wait. Wait to invite them again for a little bit. Give them some breathing room. You don't want to suffocate them. <laughs> I've been to some outreach things that were very uh, not outreach. I don't know how you would say that. Um, and, you know, if they bring it up, just say something like this. Well, I hope you do come. You know, I mean, don't, don't you know, like, don't, don't say something sarcastic like, yeah, that's what you said last time. Yeah, that'll be the day. Well, it's about time. Or what's another thing some people might say? Um, yeah, I won't hold my breath. You know, don't, don't, don't say stuff like that to people. <laughs> Hope that they come, and if they don't come, then that, that's okay. Keep loving them. Keep, keep reaching out to them, because God is still doing a work. God is always doing a work. Um, don't make them feel like you love them less or like they owe you an explanation. Don't make them feel like that. So sometimes we feel alone because we separate ourselves. Yeah? yeah. Sometimes we feel alone because <laughs> we separate ourselves. Well, I'm alone. Well, you haven't left the house in two weeks. <laughs> it's one of those things that happens. Um, sometimes we don't have anyone because we don't meet people. We want to kind of just 
keep away from people, don't get in any relationships with people, and then we want them to be able to read our minds and know when we need help. I mean, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. You can't expect people to be perfect. You know, you have to give people the same grace that you want. So just a few final thoughts. I put in closing up there because Dad, Dad hates in closing. Um, okay, first off, we belong and new people do too. We aren't a group. We aren't a club. We're always looking, we're always looking to make this family grow. You know, it's very common when people get married for the in-laws to be kind of a thorn in the flesh. You know what I mean? If you have kids that have gotten married and you know exactly what I'm talking about because you probably had to grit your teeth while your kids were marrying them. Or if you've ever mar married into someone else's family and you kind of didn't receive the warmest of welcome from the in-laws, it's a normal thing. Um, but in a church, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> in, in a church, you really don't want that to happen. Um, I was talking to some people and they seemed almost offended that a certain kind of person started coming. They completely missed it. Completely missed it. They completely missed it. See, because that, that, kind of, that, per, that kind of person, it wasn't that person specifically, it was that kind of person. You know, you, you can probably fill in the blanks of what I'm talking about here, but new people belong to. We aren't a white church, we aren't a brown church, we aren't a Republican church, we aren't a Democrat church. We are not a man church, we are not a woman church. We are Christians. It's like Galatians says, we're no longer slave, we're free, male or female, we're Christian. We all belong together, and if there's a certain group or class of people you don't want in the church, you have a serious heart problem. Luckily though, God does heart transplants. He has a number one doctor in the area, and I highly recommend him. Yep. <laughs> um, and just a few more things. Love each other without wanting anything in return. I was there for them. They should have been here for me. No, you love people because you love people. Not so that they'll love you in return. Well, I'll never love people again because they hurt me. Don't harden your heart because of what somebody else did. You got to keep on loving people because that's what Jesus did. We love because he first loved us. Well, they betrayed me. Keep on loving them. Just keep on loving. We are a lot like a river. And when we dam up the river, the water starts getting all gross. And just the very last of the last here, we need each other. We should go to church because we need each other. We belong together. And life is better together. That's what the church is about. That's why we should go to church. Next week, we're going we're gonna to look at part two to this. I, I hope that you join us. Um, but we're going to go ahead and close out there. If I can have uh, 